So information processing while we perform skills in physical activity. Um, this video really will address the processes which go on um, probably without you being aware of them all the time whilst you're playing the sports that you play or doing the activities you do. Um, so it really encompasses a few very key components. So here's the spec. Um, you need to understand key components of information processing, so the key characteristics, the key sections, and you might be asked to describe and draw the information processing models of Welford and Whiting. So we'll show you those. Um, essentially you'll have to learn them and be able to replicate them and describe the process of them. Um, obviously you'll have to do that through the application to any sports performance. So in the most simple terms, so the way we can look at information processing is it involves information input, so information coming into your body brain. You then have a processing uh, period where you take in that information, make sense of it, recognize it and ultimately make a decision and from that decision in that processing section you would then uh, send messages to your muscles to your body to make it perform a certain uh, motor program a certain skill movement and that would be your output so it's pretty simple as a basic basic process we take information in we process it and we make a decision and move at, as a result of that decision just adding a little bit more information though um, the input um, from your senses, so what you see and hear and touch, um, you then have to identify a certain stimulus. So, for example, if you're in rugby, a ball coming towards you might be detected, you would interpret that information and make sense of it. So you would pick out from the environment around you the relevant cues or information, and that information would be sent to your brain where you would then um, response selection. So you would then decide what to do based on how fast the ball's coming towards you, how far away it is, what angle it's coming, what other players are around you, are they your teammates, are they opposition? Um, and that information would have come in in that stimulus identification bit. You then make a decision, having interpreted what the situation is, what's the best action to do? Do I run, do I pass, do I kick? You then, having decided, would response program. So you would send a set of information, a set of instructions out through the nerves all over your body to specific muscles in order to put into action the decision you've made. So I'm going to run. And, you know, nervous impulses would take um, information to your muscles to make you run, and that would be your output. So there's a little bit more detail to it. So remember, it goes back as our one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, and we'll look at each one of those one, two, three in a little bit more detail now. So one was stimulus identification, and some key bits of of uh, terminology here: display. Um, display means everything in your environment. So Johnny here, his display involves a whole load of people staring at him, the officials, the opposition. Um, sensory input means what senses are used to give you your brain information f about the display so it could be what you hear so your auditory sense what you see what you touch or any contact you have with anything or perhaps what you feel about your body so your kinesthetic awareness how it feels inside you then have to make sense of things and you perceive the actual situation that you're in and selective intent attention is involved in this process as well because if Johnny purely focused or tried to focus on everything in his display he'd be pretty overwhelmed but actually what he does is he focuses, he selects a specific important cue, i.e. the goalpost and the ball to focus his attention on and that way he becomes more um, concentrated and focused so translating these, these key terms, so display is everything in your environment. As I said, the sensory input involves all your senses, both the sort of ones you might be more familiar with, auditory, visual touch, but also a couple like proprioception, 
and the, that involves actually three other things the touch of something how you sense movement your kinesthetic your kinesthetic awareness and also how balanced you feel that you are so equilibrium so the TKE refers to touch kinesthesis equilibrium then there's this process of perception, so judging the information from your display, judging and making sense of interpreting um, what you see in your display. So Johnny will be recognising that he's in a penalty kicking situation. He might actually, he's detected that he's in that situation, he might then compare to previous kicking situ situations he may have experienced. And he might try to recognise from his long term memory, have I been in this situation before? And that might add extra information to him. So detection involves the brain detecting the stimulus present, i.e. the goal, the ball. Comparison would involve comparing stimulus from long-term memory. So has he been in this situation before? And then the recognition part would be, well, yes, obviously he has kicked penalties before. So he does recognise this stimulus situation. And then finally in this part of the process, Selective attention involves filtering out the relevant information. So, filtering, recognizing that the ball and the kick, the uh, sorry, the posts are important, and then losing all the other irrelevant information. So, ignoring and and dismissing from your concentration those people that are staring at you, dismissing and filtering out the information about where your teammates are or what they might be thinking. So selective attention really just focuses in the attention. So part two was response uh, selection. So the role of basically short-term memory, long-term memory, and this thing we call translatory mechanisms. Short-term memory then is, is the processing um, memory where you process information that's come in from your uh, stimulus identification part. So you are now doing the, the, the comparison part. So this is my current situation. From long-term memory, you're recalling any previous times you've been in this situation and you're comparing the two uh, situations. So if I've been here before, what did I do before? Did it work? Long-term memory informs short-term. So as I said, we've got this store of, of previous experiences in our long-term memory. And in the process of comparing, we recall from long-term memory, have I been here before? So long-term memory provides that previous situation information. And then as a result of the comparison of previous experiences and the recognition of the current situation, we then translate that into a decision. We make a decision. So translatory mechanism mechanism is making a decision. Then finally, we've made our decision, so we have to put it into effect. Um, so the effective mechanism will involve selecting the appropriate motor program. So I've made a decision, I'm going to run. We then select the motor program of running with a rugby ball and we initiate impulses being sent to those big running muscles to make us move. Movement obviously is the actual movement so the effector mechanism is the the putting into place movement, the sending the impulses part and movement itself is obviously the actual muscular action of moving. So at this point we are now running. Then we have a really important bit, feedback. So we get internal feedback, we get kinesthetic feedback. Our receptors in our joints and muscles will tell our brain what is changing. And that is called knowledge of performance. KP is knowledge of performance. It basically means kinesthetic feedback, that internal feedback. But what we also get is external feedback. Um, KR, knowledge of results. It could be from what you see around you, so the external feedback you're getting, I'm getting further away from the tackler while I'm running, or it could be external feedback from a coach who is uh, talking to you and telling you what you're doing right or wrong. So this important, this feedback's really important because it will feed into future situations. If this worked for me before running, maybe next time I'm in that situation, I'll run again. 
Now, here we have Whiting's model of information processing. The things I've just talked through basically will fit this process, but you might see that there are different bits of language. So receptor systems would be sensory input. Um, and basically, you need to recognize and be able to apply what we just talked through to this particular model and, and draw this model. Similarly, Welford's model, you'll need to be able to draw this model, but if effectively it is what I've just talked through, perhaps using different phrases. This is just an attempt really to, you might want to pause and have a look, but attempt to show you how this central blue um, terminology are the key components to the information processing models. And then on the left I've got Welford's, on the right I've got Whiting's model and the language that they, yet they use. So this just shows you actually there is different language that unfortunately they use, but the key components can be applied to both of them. Lastly then, a couple of um, bits of information uh, regarding other processing perspectives. There's a model called the single channel hypothesis. Now what this model implies is that we can actually only process one th bit of information at a time and respond to one bit of information at a time. So even though there may be multiple um, pieces of information coming into our brain, the blue section there, we are actually only able to process one at a time. So we are limited in our processing capacity. That's just somebody's perspective. So whether you agree with this or not, you need to understand that this is called the single channel hypothesis, and this is what somebody has thinks happen. There's also some other um, perspectives. So we have serial processing or parallel processing. Now, serial processing, the example might be a trampolining sequence where you execute one skill, and then following that you execute another skill and then another skill and then another skill so one after the other after the other so serial processing suggests that when we inf when we um, process information it's in stages we have to do the first stage then the second stage then the third stage and so on and so on in sequence we can't do it other than one at a time one following the other parallel processing as it suggests by this um, dribbling scenario, this player who's dribbling is actually taking in loads of bits of information and making loads of decisions at the same time, so in parallel. So this suggests that we can process information at the same time, um, do multiple processing. So finally then, just recapping the specification. So we need to understand the key components of information processing that can be applied to those two key models, Welford and Whiting. And you might be expected to draw uh, Welford or Whiting's model and apply that information to it.